Data Test Tuesday Summary What looked like a wasted day quickly turned around at Sepun. Tuesday started wet, the streets and circuits taking a while to dry after Monday evening's torrential rain. Sepun's weakness was once again exposed, the track took a long time to dry, wet patches remaining on the track for several hours. It was not until 1 p.m. that a few riders started to venture out, and by 2 p.m., the track was full with riders trying to make up for valuable lost time. Some riders made use of the conditions, as far from ideal as they were. Jorge Lorenzo put in 10 laps in the wet, and Johan Zarco put in 8 laps. The reason? To help build confidence, for Lorenzo in the wet, for Zarco, to try to figure out what a motorbike is capable of. Zarco rode a pair of wet tires to destruction, feeling how the soft, moving rubber exaggerated every movement of the bike. It served as a sort of magnifying glass for how a motorbike behaves, amplifying the feedback and making it much clearer to fully understand, Zarco explained. By the end of the run, he had learned a lot, and made a massive step forward. How much difference had it made? When the red lights came on for the end of the session, Zarco's name was still fifth on the time sheets. A monster in Mahatech 3 Maharider less than a tenth behind Valentino Rossi, and half a second behind Maverick Vinyl Spin second. The Frenchman had found a way of understanding where the limits lay without pushing himself over the edge. The timesheets made for interesting reading at the end of the day, both in terms of headline times, and in underlying pace. Three different manufacturers graced the top three places, the top nine consisting of a Suzuki, four Imahas and four Ducatis. Mark Marquez was the first Honda rider in tenth place, over a second behind fastest man Andrea Anone, and nearly seven tenths slower than Vinyls. The Anone was quickest by a considerable margin, well ahead of Vinyls and the remarkable Alvaro Batista on the pole and their Aspar Ducati. Batista has taken to the GP16 like a duck to water, showing strong pace on both days of the test. Rossi headed Zarco by a fraction in fourth and fifth respectively. Then came an armada of Ducatis, captained by Hector Barbera. The Avenia GP16 man was quicker than both factory Ducatis, Andrea Devizioso less than a tenth quicker than Jorge Lorenzo. The second monster Tech 3 Maha rider, Jonas Folger, took ninth, with Marquez rounding out the top ten. The headline times do not tell the full story, however. The unknown's time was a single fast lap, set pushing on a soft tire. Maverick Vinyl did his best lap as part of a string of three laps in the 159s, the only rider other than the unknown to get under the two-minute mark. The unknown managed it only once, however, not three times in the road. Vinyls had by far the best overall pace. In addition to the 3159s on a new tire, he also did 9 laps in the 200s. Only Alvaro Batista did more 2 minute laps, racking up 10 of them, but Batista did not get under 2 minutes on Tuesday. The two Tech 3 riders both managed 6 laps in the 200s. Though Folger's laps were slower than Zarco's, Mark Marquez, meanwhile, may have been only tenth, but he also managed six laps in the 200s, at the same kind of pace as Valentino Rossi's for two-minute laps. What conclusions can we draw so far, however preliminary they may be? Maverick Vinyls is genuinely fast and spent the day working on his race pace on worn tires. The parts Himaha have brought for the M1 apart from the fairing, but more about that later are aimed at exactly that, conserving the tire in the second half of the race, to be able to maintain the pace for as long as possible. On Wednesday, weather permitting, 
Miles will take the new frame and try to use it for a full race simulation. If Miles is fast, Mark Marquez is probably also quick, though he is hiding his speed a little while he works on the Honda's engine and electronics. Marquez was clear that this was his only focus at the test, and in reality, the only problem the bike really has. The chassis is fine, but the engine is still too aggressive, and lacks grip. Despite switching from a screamer to a big bang configuration, the rear tire still spins until it grips, and when it grips, it wants to loft the front wheel. That was what Andrea De Vizioso had seen while following the Rexall Honda rider. I don't know if Mark had a really used tire so it's difficult to know the real speed but he didn't have a lot of grip and acceleration, the Ducati rider said. He was very good in the braking, he added, always the strength of Marquess. The problems of the wheelie and the acceleration is still there, said Marquess. The problem was different, but still present, much to the frustration of all the Honda riders. When asked about the new engine that Honda has brought, Calcrutch loaded his best to emulate former Malawian dictator Hastings Banga, repeatedly answering I can't tell you that, to our questions. The timesheets told us all we needed to know, he hinted. Yet Marquez was still optimistic despite the issues that remain with Honda's new engine. They were working hard at sorting out engine naps and electronics to help control the bike, he said. That was mainly a matter of time on track, and time to work through the data to figure out what is going on. Though the complaints he is making are familiar, we heard them as Sepin in 2016, and a year before in Sepin in 2015. Marquez believes there is a bright side to his current situation. Is the situation better or worse than Sepp last year? At the same time last year here, yes, we are in a better way, Marquez replied. If Honda's work is largely happening unseen, as engineers crunch numbers and enter matrices full of values to control the behavior of the bike, Yamaha tested a highly visible development at Sepin. Anyone who had applauded the panning of the wings as a blow for aestheticism found themselves cruelly deceived. Images had been doing the rounds on the internet, of a double wall fairing with a large section stuck on the upper half, including veins inside it. When I first saw it, I wrote it off as a poor fake done using Photoshop. The movies are upper clearly not fitting with the black carbon fiber test fairing. But on Tuesday morning, the Italian website Gipani.com published shots taken by Italian photographer Mirko Lazari, a Yamaha test rider called a Nozanes M1 sporting the exact movies are liveried fairing pods on top of his CF test fairing. Confirmation soon came from Pit Lane. MCN's Simon Patterson quickest off the mark, and then Crash.net's Peter McLaren also capturing the new fairing, a copy of which he kindly provided to us above. The clearest demonstration of what has changed came in this side-by-side -side comparison photo from Malaysian photographer Hasran Crick. The upper half of the fairing has had a sort of side pod attached to it containing a series of veins, to provide downforce to replace the now banned winglets. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye.